You had a great reception in, in, in Cannes for the film. Yeah, it was amazing. It was very warm, very yeah, nice. I wonder if, 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 that's, um, if that's a good thing, that the fact that it won't just be the UK, that, the, that most of the world in Europe will see this film and, and see what's going on. Well, I hope so. I mean, the, 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 the details change, but in essence, it's the same, the same story. Um, I mean, when we were in Spain, we took the film to a, a festival in Spain, and in the town there were care workers on strike, like Abby in the film, you know. Um, and we, we had screenings in France last week, and the uh, a huge cinema, a thousand seater. Um, we had discussion afterwards, group after group of couriers and drivers came up and said, we're on strike, you know, because the, the wages are so low and the conditions are so bad. So people are fighting back, and there's couriers in London taking strike action too. So I think things are beginning to move, really. Yeah, and it's what you say. I mean, it's a community that's very much, uh, it's just that, a community who, you know, it's a very industrial town, but also they have their things where they have to go to the pub together and go to football. But yeah, all yeah. those things are getting affected yes, by yeah. what's going on. Yes, yeah, yes. Well, people just have no security. I mean, their job can be turned on and off um, like a tap. And uh, it suits the employers because they have no responsibility. Um, don't pay holiday pay, sick pay, any of that. And workers are working 12 hours a day just to, just to stay out of debt. Yeah. And it can't be right. It can't be right. It's not sustainable. Yeah, and also it's a, it's a mental health issue as well, isn't it? In the sense that it's yeah. affecting people's yeah, yeah. livelihoods and their, the joy yeah. of whatever it's their job. And I say, yeah, yes. the community where they go and yeah, do yeah, things yeah. together. And are, are you hopeful that this is under stress as well? Stress, mental ill health, um, um, the real and tension in families. And it's, I mean, it's the, it's the economic system that's driving it, and until we deal with that, I think we I don't think we'll, you know, we, we, we won't solve it. A few reforms here and there won't solve it. Yeah, but just finally, I mean, cinema is such a powerful tool at the best of times. Are you hopeful that the audiences that do go and see this take away enough to make them ask the right questions, whether they're in power, whether they're just regular people, that they, they start to want to see a change? Um, yeah, well, I, it, it needs political intervention. Obviously, the, we need a good, strong surge from the grassroots of people saying this is not tolerable. And that and a political movement and strong trade unions. And, a, and if, if Jeremy Corbyn gets in power, then the trade unions will get more, be given more um, strength again. You know, the statute the took away. That will help because when people can get organised, then they're strong. Um, Paul found doing this that when he meant to meet the drivers in the car parks before they began their shift, um, they were they were sitting in their cabs. He said, why are you sitting in your cabs? He said, well, management won't let us get outside and talk to each other because they're afraid they're going to, you know, join together. But I want to ask you about your experience in, in Cannes because you had a great res response from everybody out there and the, the kids were saying it's like their first holiday ever and going to the Cannes Film yeah, Festival. Yeah, it was. Was that a bit um, of a blur or was that a great experience to, to see the festival and also see how the film was playing it, with an audience? It was an absolute blur. Uh, I was in the middle of film, uh, doing another film, so I got flew out there, didn't have a great amount of sleep and thrown on the red carpet, so... Um, and then the following day, the junkets. So, and um, yeah, it was just, just I just went on autopilot and just tried to get through it. I yeah. think. Try, I hid myself a little bit, you know, like Michelle. <laughs> and I mean, this, uh, the, the town that this is set, it's very much uh, such a big community, you know, in, in Newcastle and everything mm. else, you know, they're such a big dude and they go to the football together and the yeah, pub and all that do. kind of stuff. But then these guys and these women, are, uh, mental health issues and becoming stressed and anxious. Do you, how do you think that's affecting the, the, the country? Because it's such a it's such a horrible thing that's happening to a lot of these guys just to make ends meet. Um, you know what? I, I think the thing is, is um, it's like uh, is it Pablo's dogs. You know where you become a, and you get conditioned, mm. and I think that's what, kind of what's going on in a spooky way. I think people from the working classes and from the non-skilled worker section, they're kind of they're being conditioned that it's normal. Mm. This is what you have to do. You know, so um, it's almost as though they're not allowed to have anything decent in their lives. If you can eat, if you can warm your house up, you're doing well. You know, and it's and it's it's not fair, is it? Everybody should be able to have um, have a have a good go at it. Yeah, and also it affects families as well, like we see in the film. You know, yeah. the wider relationships, everything becomes so fraught when actually does. you're just trying to. To, to make an honest living, if you like. I mean, there's a great rawness and honesty in the in the film that, that must fill you with joy in the sense that people are going to see what it is kind of really like. 
Well, I, I think the thing is, is me and Deb were talking about this the other day when we were in Belgium, and um, you know, we, we we both understand that that you have you have to be responsible when you do this job. This isn't, you know, this isn't a Marvel film or a Disney film. This is Ken Loach. This is a film that's going to matter to people. Look at what I, Daniel Blake, did. Mm. You know, so you've, you've, you've got to be really responsible. You've got to turn up. You've got to be dedicated. You've got to do the best that you possibly can do because this is people's lives we're talking about here. You know, it's not Fast and the Furious 18, is it? Or Batman versus Judge Dredd or something crazy mm. like that. It really, really counts for something. Yeah, and what I just find, I mean, Ken, Ken's made some amazing uh, movies over the years and told some extraordinary stories that need to tell him. Why do you think he's endured for, for, for so many decades as, a, as this kind of unique filmmaker? Um, well, nobody else has got the balls to make things like Ken, have they? Let's be honest, just putting it out there. Um, you know, he does, he does the things that go against the grain, you know, that go against, that he shows you the, the side of the me- media that the media doesn't show you. Um, and, he, and he goes to the places where... You know, I hate to say it, people from the middle classes and the upper classes, they haven't got a clue, they've never, they've never, never been to him, you know. They might do if they'd been to a wild party one night and ended up going back to someone's house somewhere. Yeah. But aside from that, they're not in it day in, day out, are they? And this is a way of just absolutely shoving it in your face and saying, look, this is what's going on, do something about it. I wanted to ask you, I didn't ask you earlier, about your experience in Cannes. This was your first film. I can imagine going to Cannes uh, for a holiday is quite nice, but to go for a film festival is pretty incredible. Like, that was my first ever holiday. Oh, really? But to go for, like, a big, massive music festival, yeah, it was, like, one of the weirdest things ever. Like, I didn't expect to really get that part or get where I was. And to be honest, yeah, it was just all a flood of crazy emotions. Uh, I don't know what else to say, to be honest with you. Like, it was just weird. Was it right that I read that you, you, were, you were chased by some people or was that, was that other yeah. people? Yeah, actually, yeah. Me and Katie, after we got out the uh, cinema screen, what, like 50 people came up to me yeah, and asked them for like, autographs and stuff like that. But like, that experience, like to make someone happy in your presence is a mad thing like, like, to be able to do. Yeah. It's like, I've had a few fans, like how the hell have I got fans, you know what I mean? I've had a few fans come up to me uh, in the UK as well and just ask me for like pictures and stuff like that. And then a few people on over Instagram have asked me, like, all oh, this and that, and I've spoke to them, and then some all of them have popped up and said, thank you so much for speaking to me, you've made my day. And that's an insane thing to yeah. be able to do. What was it like when you got the you got a standing ovation? What was that experience like being in the cinema of all those people clapping your film? Oh, it was one of the best feelings, honestly. It just makes you feel like, wow, I've actually, like, I've made people in, like, enjoy this film like this is just it's such a big thing it's really yeah. good yeah and just as a final question i mean obviously this is a story about about family i mean what do you think your your school friends and your friends will, will make of this film and do you hope that they take some take some lessons into their into their future i hope i hope it makes people not afraid to speak about their problems if you know what i mean if people take in from the movie and change on their lifestyle then i think the world could become a better place because obviously it happens to like loads of families you know what i mean so if people are like look someone's get like someone's talking about it then hopefully it gives them the confidence to speak to other people about it like about their situations or what they're going through and then it could probably make the world a better place well obviously um i've always just worked in schools with kids um i'm, I'm just a normal girl working class so can film festival i i watch all the film i watch all the red carpets at home always have done always well i love all the clothes everything so when we ended up going to can it was like oh my god it's like Dream come true. And obviously, I've got to dress off Victoria Beckham, so that's pretty, pretty special. Um, it was an amazing experience. It wasn't only just the, the glitz and glamour, it was actually meeting the people that um, watched the film and the feedback on the street was just brilliant. With your work in schools then, how important is a movie like this to, to kind of uh, educate the younger people? I mean, do you think it will become an important exercise for them to know about this in the years to come? Educating the younger people, but it's also um, showing people what austerity and poverty and stress puts on to families. There's been a massive rise in mental health issues with children and that austerity has got a lot to do with it. Um, and I've seen it for years, it's coming, it's getting worse. So this has to change, we need to help people a bit more. Are you hoping that the, the right people in, in politics or in the government do the, right, do the right thing in the years uh, to come? That's my friend. <laughs> my friend. <laughs> <laughs> um, <Juan. laughs> um, so, 
I'm hoping that it causes people to vote to make sure we have a government that cares about people and not. Um, I want to ask you about your uh, presentation in Cannes because it went down very, very well uh, when you premiered the film in Cannes. Yes, uh-huh. uh are you, are you hopeful that this film, not just in the UK, but also kind of transcends over the globe as to, to what's happening in the UK and shines a light in the right place and has the right discussions? Oh, yeah, well, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's, um, you, we can only do so much, really. It depends whether it hits the, hits the sweet spot or not and how people react to it. But um, I think we've actually got a very intimate portrait of a family. I think people will enjoy spending time with these people and I think you'll see people on screen that you might recognise, you know, friends, family, neighbours and um, so, so I hope it works but it's in the lap of the gods, you know, you can't presume. Yeah, and this, this fantastic cast, a lot of them unknowns are doing their first, yes, their first movie. There's Aye. a great energy and a great honesty in their performances. Yeah, it must have yeah. been great to see their performances un, unfold on screen. It was, it was terrific. They're a lovely gang, really, really, nice. they're really, really lovely people actually. A wee Katie is as sharp as a tack, you know, and uh, Reese, who's the young boy who plays a teenager, you know, anybody who's got a teenage son or a teenage brother, I think, will, will recognise something very truthful. And um, and I think there was great chemistry between Ricky and Abby. Yeah. You know, uh, Ricky at one point actually did, you know, he had a plumber business and drove a van, you know, and, and Debbie, quite remarkable, she was a teacher assistant, you know. Yeah. And I think really, uh, very nuanced performances from them, so uh, we couldn't be more happy. Yeah. Let me just ask you quickly about Ken, because you were together earlier, but he's such a unique filmmaker and, and tells such amazing stories and shines a light in the right places. Why do you think he is and has endured for, for, for so, so long? Well, he's a, well, it's very hard because he's made to talk objectively about it, but um, ever since I've known him, you know, he's... Um, I mean, he's got great curiosity for people's lives, you know, and uh, and he's smart as a whip, you know, whip it, you know. So, I mean, you need brains to kind of try and unravel things, you know. But there's a there's a generosity there that has never left him, you know. I think from a young man, he had that energy and curiosity about people's lives, and there he is, 83, still battling on and and still really curious about people's lives. And I think that's what gives him the motor. And um, you know, and I suppose he gets mad at the same things that you know that people who made the film, you know, the mass inequality, people's lives destroyed, you know, corporations have control over people's lives and how it plays out in the family, you know, so uh, I think he's done a remarkable job in this one, really. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey You Guys, huh? Is that from the Goonies? Nice. Hey!